Welcome. In a previous video, I upgraded the hard drive in a late 2007 Mac Mini with an SSD. In this video, I'm going to be installing the original operating system on it, which was Mac OS 10.4. So I've started this up and it has a flashing folder here with a question mark in it. I'll insert the DVD. And if you don't have these DVDs, I'm not sure where to get them. You could probably find them on eBay. So optionally, you can boot this while holding down the option key on your keyboard, or you can boot and hold down I think it's Command C or just C, one of those two, and it should boot from that disk. But it seemed to have recognized the disk, and the installer comes on two DVDs. Okay, so it's asking me for my language. I'll just choose English. It says, Welcome to the Mac OS installer. I'll just hit continue here. It wants me to agree to the license agreement. I've already read this probably, so I'll hit continue. I'll hit agree. Okay, so the drive I had originally put in here, which was a crucial drive, and that wasn't working, so I swapped it out for a 500 gigabyte Samsung. And I don't know if it was the format of that one or what, but the Samsung I put in an external enclosure and plugged it into my other Mac, and I formatted it once. But it looks like it still has a problem. So I'll go up here to Utilities and then go down to Disk Utility. Now I'll select the Samsung drive, I'll click Erase, I'll choose Mac OS Extended Journaled, I'll name it Macintosh HD and I'll hit Erase. Okay, that worked without errors. I'll close out of here. I can select this now. So the crucial drive I had in here, I had formatted as FAT before I uh, put it in because it had Linux format on it before and it didn't work. So if I had reformatted that crucial the same way I did the Samsung, it may have worked. I don't know. It's hard to say. So okay, I'll select that here. I'll hit continue. It says please have Mac OS X install disk 2 ready, which I do. I'll hit install. And this will probably take a few minutes. So I'm going to skip just checking your installation media. You should probably do that, but if this fails installing, you'll never see this video. So I'll hit skip here. Okay, so it ejected the first disk and it's asking for the second one, so I'll stick it in. Okay, so the install is finished. It's ejecting the disk. Okay, so it says before you begin, the keyboard cannot be identified. I'll hit OK. It wants me to press these keys, so this will be the Z key on my keyboard. And then the question mark. I'll hit continue here. I'll choose United States. It asks if I already own a Mac. I'll just say don't transfer. US keyboard. It wants me to create an Apple ID. I'll just hit Command Q here, and that'll let me skip this. Now it wants me to create an account. I'll hit continue. I'll choose my time zone. I'll hit continue here. It says don't forget to register. I'll hit done. And here we're booted up into Mac OS 10.4. If we go to the Apple menu here and say about this Mac, we should see it. We can hit software update. I don't know if they're still uh, hosting this. So it looks like they are definitely hosting this. So there's quite a few updates here. So I'll update these later. I'll hit quit for now. Let's look at the applications it came with. Boy, this really takes me back. 
So we see a lot of the things that we still have today. Some of these are gone, like DVD player isn't really much of a thing anymore. GarageBand's still around. iCal is now called Cal. iChat's gone. iDVD was like some DVD uh, authoring software. There's iWork, has Keynote, Numbers, and Pages. So those are probably some pretty early versions of that. A QuickTime Player, Safari. Let's see if a website will open. So that did open up very quickly. Hit cancel here. I'm gonna try and open my own website. It says it can't establish a secure connection. Let's see if Google works. Looks like Google is working. So I don't know if I updated this software, if the Safari that it will update to is better than this, or you would probably be better off going to a different browser. So let's just open something else up to see how fast it loads. Now this only has a one gigabyte of RAM in it. So there's not a lot of RAM in here. Let's open up maybe pages or sheets or something. Let's try pages. Okay. Oh, it looks like we have to buy or try this. Let's see if there's something else. Let's open iPhoto. Okay, hit OK. So I'll close that down. It's taking longer to close than it did to open. Let's open it again. It opens pretty quickly. Let's uh, close down Safari and then I'll open it up again. That opened instantaneously. That was very fast. Let's try Calculator. That opened quickly. Utilities. See if there's anything in here. Activity monitor. This is actually very, very fast. I'm surprised. Where you'd run into problems is if you opened up a lot of things at once. I don't know what to type in there. <laughs> so this only has a SATA 2 interface for the SSD, so you're not going to get the full speed you would out of a more modern machine, but it's still going to be way faster than a spinny hard drive, and you also have faster random access. Video. I wanted to see how long this takes to reboot, so I've done the updates on it, and I did like three or four or five updates. I'd updated reboot, I'd re-update, I have all the updates now installed on this. So I'll go up here, I'll go to restart, and I'll hit restart, and I'll do my timer now. Okay, and there we're up, it's about 15 seconds. There we go. So one thing I found that's weird with this is it takes a minute for the network to come up. So now it is up, but it doesn't seem to have the network up right away after it boots. But that's pretty fast boot time, 15 seconds for a machine that's 13 years old. So I think that's where I'm going to end it on this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.